City now have a seven-point lead over Liverpool. So if City beat Liverpool at the weekend when they play each other, it becomes a ten-point lead. Is this it for Liverpool's title hopes if they lose at the weekend? I think so. Um, with that and then a game in hand, potentially 13 points, um, I don't think you expect to claw that back as good as Liverpool can be. Um, Man City show no signs of, of losing that many games, potentially five games between mm. now and the end of the season. It doesn't look likely. It makes Sunday massive, doesn't it? I think uh, if Liverpool got hopes of, of winning the league, they, they need to win that. 68 home games without defeat. Two defeats in 10 days. What's going on? Um, it was difficult. Just they, they, you know, Brighton came with a game plan, didn't they? And I think it's the blueprint really that Burnley had, that the teams you've you've mentioned have had to, to sit in, and um, they looked a little bit devoid of ideas. Uh, Liverpool, they found it tough to break down, and um, you know, Shakiri couldn't get them ticking. You know, Salah looked very sharp in the opening part of the game, but but fizzled out. They they sat back. They had a great game plan. They they also looked like a threat when they uh, with set pieces and, and going forward as well. So you have to credit Brighton, but um, it's it's happened too many times at Anfield this season. Whereas last season it was it was non-existent. Yeah. Well, congratulations tonight to Brighton. Let's get some instant reaction from them. Stephen Alzate is with Des Kelly. Stephen, congratulations. That's a magnificent result for Brighton tonight. Yeah. Big result. Big result. Um, last few games we've been getting decent results, and I feel like. It's been coming. We've been playing well since the beginning of the season, but luck hasn't really come our way. But yeah, massive win today. Yeah, the last time Brighton won a league game here at Anfield, 39 years ago. So, but one for the history books. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy coming here. Better champions for a reason. Um, we stuck to our, our, our game plan, and um, yeah, it worked. Well, definitely. Did. Let's clear up the goal. Definitely yours? I'm not sure, but I'll take it. You've got to take it. <laughs> yeah. It's the first, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's my first Premier League goal, yeah. Definitely. No one's taken Got to that take one, that one. Right? But you're, you, you mentioned the game plan. It, it worked perfectly. And what, so what was, the pl what was the discussion before the game? I mean, we've got to respect our opponents, but we wanted to press from the beginning. We didn't want to give them too much time on the ball. But obviously, when you go 1-0 up, it's, it's natural that the team behind are just going to come on top. And yeah, we had to work our, we had, we had to work our socks off to keep a clean sheet. Yeah, we see that. The defence was an admirable job. But it wasn't just a, a case of playing negatively. You were looking for the break and looking to, to get behind and around Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got some quick players on our team. And when we got the chance, we want to catch um, the opposition on the counter-attack. Yeah, and it worked perfectly. Of course, in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, in the picture at the bottom of the table, you're looking very, very good at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Premier League's not easy. Picking up points is, is big, and especially against a team like Liverpool. So we just got to keep keep going and keep picking as many points as we can. Oh, what a great result! Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. You don't go to Ramfield, beat Liverpool, and then say that you don't want the goal. Right there, you go. That's the way the top of the table is looking. You can see there, Liverpool sitting in fourth place. So City have that three-point lead and a goal in uh, and a game in hand. United, Leicester, West Ham, Everton, all won around Liverpool. We know there's been serious injuries for them to deal with. But even so, it looks like their title challenge and their defence of the Premier League crown is hanging by a thread. Meanwhile, down towards the bottom, three wins in form transform Brighton's season. They are now 10 points from danger. Congratulations to them. Right, we're going to take a quick break. The question is, is this win for Brighton? Um, I'm afraid to say that Steve McManaman played you a bad pass during the game. He said that you are going to forensically analyse and work out who scored the goal at full time. Are you, are you happy to do that? Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. Let's do it then. There's a, there's a rule that we have as, as strikers, if it's a dubious goal, you celebrate the most. Um, I've done it on many occasions, and uh, Al Zati does it here. It was a, listen, it was a fantastic goal. For, um, you know, Dan Byrne played the pass, and he, he didn't admire it. He, he got into the box. Uh, Trent switches off. Shakiri's completely left him. And uh, it was a great header back from, uh, from Dan Byrne, and then it was... Uh, was it Al Zati and, and Trossard, will it? And uh, I think there's a mixture of sort of two, three touches here. I think if we, yeah, I'll have a look at, look at this now. I still can't make up my mind. I feel like Alzati gets there, comes off Trust Trossard, and then hits Alzati again. And I'm going to go with that. Right, so you're saying because Alzati he celebrated the most. Yeah, because he celebrated the most. <laughs> <laughs> so Trossard gets the assist. Yeah, it's a good assist yeah. from Trossard, yeah. But um, this is his first goal for Brighton, you yeah. know, in the, in the Premier League. Let's give it to him. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned there Dan Byrne. He was absolutely vital to the Brighton game plan tonight, wasn't he? He was great. Oh, instrumental in both boxes. And, and I think 
numerous times he was the highest player, the furthest play forward. And unfortunately for Brighton, a couple of their best opportunities fell to him. But when he mattered and he had to cut it back, he made the right decision. And as you said, he wasn't just in there to kind of be a defensive ruck. He was getting forward. Um, you see here, he's, he's advanced of Trent in an early stage in, in an attack. And he recognised the situations and probably didn't get enough credit doesn't get enough credit for his job that he does for that team. Um, numerous times we've seen him as a fullback, and he contributes him at both ends of the pitch. Mm. What, what I will say about Dan Byrne, that's, uh, that's not an isolated performance, that. Yeah. Whenever I've watched him, he's good on the ball. He gets forward. You know, he does his job defensively. His work rate's good. I mean, look at those touches there. He's the most touch of, touches of any Brighton player today. Uh, but I've seen it on more than one occasion, and, uh, and he's a tall lad, so we all stick together. Yeah. <laughs> Quite right. Uh, not an isolated performance from him, not an isolated result now either from Brighton. They're keeping clean sheets, mm. they're winning games. We said at the end there, they have turned their season around in the, in the space of four matches. Yeah, hugely. Um, I was slightly critical of them against uh, Man City a few weeks ago, coming off the back of a half-decent performance but losing. And then since that, they've just kicked on um, in both areas. So um, well drilled. That's what I'm saying. You can see there that everyone's back, but again, when they're going forward, they've got a high number of players there, but you see how much it means to the defenders. They're dying for the cause. They're trying to get in the way of shots, uh, crosses, um, and really enjoyed the clean sheet at the end of it. And here, Webster, obviously, rightly so, man of the match, um, contributed in, in kind of any, every way possible. Great tackle there. Yeah, it was. It, it felt like they came with a game plan, doesn't it? It wasn't just a team with their backs yeah. to the wall. It felt like there was a real plan. It felt like in the first half, especially, they got after them when they could, tried to win it back in the in Liverpool's half. But when Liverpool did get over the, the halfway line, they just retreated and and made sure they were difficult to break down, and they got the win deservedly so. Look at the teams they've beaten. I mean, Leeds who playing brilliant football, Spurs, Liverpool. These are wins that are going to give these players the belief, the belief to, to push on. Yeah, again, at, at both aspects of their game, if you're looking at them, them uh, um, results and you're saying you're only going to concede one goal and it's going to be against Man City, you take that. Um, because they do create chances. And like Peter said, then it wasn't just a, a solid performance and let's just sit back and, and be deep. No, let's be expansive. We can get forward and create problems. There you go. Look, 10 points above the drop zone. Uh, suddenly things are looking up for Brighton. But let's talk about Liverpool then. Look, we've done two teams tonight, two teams vying for the title, two teams who play each other at the weekend. The first team had a bench worth over £150 million. The Liverpool team this evening had a bench worth 50 And it's not all about money, mm -hmm. but it was also a bench with four academy players. It was also a bench where Minamino wasn't there because he's gone out on loan. It was also a bench that was unable to affect and impact the game when it was required. How deep run the problems at Liverpool at the moment? Um, they were superhuman last year, weren't they? Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing a sort of human side to them, understandably so. But having said that, you know, with, with missing Alisson today, the Van Dijk, Jota, um, there's, there's Mane. Mane. Mm -hmm. but, you know, these are big, big players. Anyone's going to miss those four or five players I've mentioned there. Um, but having said that, you know, they're, they're, they're a title win inside. They've won the Champions League. You know, they perhaps should have a, have a deeper squad. And they've tried to address that with, with bringing the centre-halves in. But um, hopefully Jota's been, been training now as well. Don't know how far away Mane is. But listen, Liverpool are capable of putting a real big run together. But whether you can see City losing four or five games, I'm not so sure. Yeah, the same. Again, like, they're going to miss them players because they're top-quality players. But... Other players have done, other teams have had to do that um, and use the squad and utilise the players. But at the moment, it just looks like they've, they've one-dimensional in terms of their attack. Um, yeah, it has more effect when there's Mane on the other side and you can go in behind, as we've seen against Spurs when both players are in behind. But when it's just Salah and you're thinking mm. that's the only way they're going to get in. There's no over-reliance on Salah, isn't there? Yeah. You know, Firmino's got to step up. Um, yeah. I, I know, you know, it felt like he's, he's come back into it, but, but Salah's the one scoring the goals. I mean, he's still got 20-odd goals. <laughs> We're talking about him not being on top form. He's a top-class player. But with Mane missing, Jota as well, it was a shame when, when Jota got injured because yeah. he was really pushing them for, to, to, to start. But when Salah's not on it or, or he misses chances, I just don't think there's enough when Mane's out and, and Jota's out uh, in, in the team to score goals. Yeah, I know. They're, they're probably the one mistake that Dan Byrne made, but yeah, the two best chances fell to the player they would want them to fall to, but players like that have off nights, and that was the case tonight, and you need someone else to step up to the plate, and no one seems to be doing that for, for Liverpool at the moment. It's been a bad week for them, because every team around them has picked up points, and it's not just about Liverpool, is it? It's about the team who are top of the table. You know, as Peter mentioned, City are going to have to lose four games from here till the end for Liverpool to win the league. 
Yeah, they've lost two all season. Yeah, one hundred percent. And as much as when United and Leicester are in there, I don't feel they're capable of going on a, a seven eight game winning so who, streak. Who's in the title race? For, for me, it was just always going to be Man City and Liverpool because they're uh, the only teams I believe that are capable of winning ten games in a row. So is it still Liverpool? Yeah. Mm, probably not so much now, especially if they lose on the weekend. But in regards to before this game, and we expected them to win, uh, yeah, definitely would have been them two teams. Hey, it's just a crazy season. And I know yeah. people will say it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? But it is. It's been it's been nuts. And uh, Liverpool are more. They will get players back, you know. Mm. So they they will go go on a run. Uh, we can't discount Manchester United, and I think Leicester have been fantastic. Another win for them tonight. They've got so many. Good players, um, so you can't discount them, but City, strong yeah, favourites. I'm not now. trying to discredit them. I just said I just don't believe they have the capabilities or the belief in themselves to go and say, we're going to win eight games here, um, regardless of who they face. You're saying City have won the league? At the moment. <laughs> he would say that, wouldn't he? <laughs> of course he <laughs> would. At the moment. You need to say something else. <laughs> uh, right, let's get some more reaction. Uh, brilliant, brilliant result for Brighton tonight. Let's hear from their manager with Des.